What is up you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Nikki here. And in today's video, we're going to be going over the best dividend stocks that you should buy in 2022. And you already know the drill, let's get it. Ooh, big bad. You not talking money, you can miss me with the chit chat. I'm not with the rah rah or the now, y'all, I want to give you four dividend stocks I feel like you should pick up for 2022, and I think they're going to do extremely well in 2022. I'm also going to throw in a bonus at the end, okay? So make sure you stick around to see that one because I think that one's the best of the bunch. But two things here, you guys. The first thing is obviously we're going to be looking at numbers. As a dividend investor, it's important that the numbers make sense in order for us to invest in these stocks because we want to make sure ultimately these companies have enough moolah to pay me my dividends, to pay me my money. You know what I'm saying? The second thing I want to talk about real quick when I go over each one of these are other things I truly believe matter almost more than the numbers, which might sound stupid as an investor, but sometimes the numbers just aren't enough. And with dividends, especially, they're never guaranteed. And anything that 2020 showed us with COVID, companies were cutting dividends left and right that hadn't cut them in years or had been paying them for years. You never have a risk-free investment in the stock market. Just, I want to put that out there because I feel like people, you know, they overthink the numbers a little bit too much. It's never safe. But in addition to those numbers, which do matter, we're thinking about things like new opportunities. What are these norms that we have now and what can benefit from these norms, which is a whole nother video in and of itself. But that's also a situation, the economy, what's going on with inflation, what's going on with money. COVID is still a thing. It is still here. And there are huge, huge political midterms next year. Okay. The November midterm elections for 2022. And those I think are going to cause a lot of craziness. So these four stocks are things that I think you cannot go wrong with. And quite frankly, personally, they're going to be ones that I am heavily adding to my portfolio. So the first one is going to be Abvi. Now I can already hear some of you, I have the keyboards are hot, you're typing because in 2023, they're gonna lose their Humera drug, okay? The patent on that. But we'll talk about that in a second. Abvi is one that I swear to you, a goal of mine is going to be adding one share of Abvi to my portfolio every single month. But besides the point, here's some numbers on this one. Abvi is 20% less volatile than the over overall market, meaning you're not going to see a lot of this within your holdings in Abvi. They have a current dividend yield of about 4.3%. I'm telling you, people sleep on Abvi. I was sleeping. I was snoozing. I was having a nap. No more. Not in 2022. And the last three-year growth rate of Abvi's dividend has been 85%. The Humira drug situation that they're going to be losing in 2023, that makes up, I believe I read it was like, 80% of their business. I can't be right. That can't be right. But a big portion of their business was through this drug, okay? And they're losing that. So a lot of people are like, it's gonna be no good. It's gonna crash. It's gonna fall. It's a bad investment. But I disagree because one, this isn't new to them. Like they knew that this was going to be happening. They've had a while to prepare with how they're going to address it, how they're gonna react with it, how their business is going to move forward without it. And I shouldn't say without it, but like without the patent on it. So other competitors can come into the market and make copycat drugs essentially. Plus they do have a bunch of other industry leading drugs that will carry it to new heights, I'm sure, and they'll create more and it just, it is what it is. And the fact that it is a healthcare pharmaceutical biotech company that works with drugs and is in the healthcare industry, if COVID has taught me anything, it's that COVID will never go away <laughs> and pharmacies are getting richer by the second. So if they're gonna do it, I'm gonna take a part of it, okay? I'm not getting used. I'm not gonna be the little guy anymore. Plus just the cherry on top is that dividend. You can't go wrong, but let's get into the next stock because this one is my absolute favorite REIT that I talk about all the time. And that's going to be stag industrially. I've talked about this enough. I've talked about REITs a ton, real estate investment trusts. I have done a handful of videos on that REIT specifically, but also others. I will go ahead and link it down in the first comment below for you to check out after this video. But let's look at some numbers for stag. They pay a monthly dividend. Their dividend yield is a 3.25%. They have increased those dividends the last nine years. The payout ratio, honestly, I believe it's over like 120% or it's 125%, which is a little bit high, but I'm really not concerned because of all of the rules and guidelines and all of that stuff that REITs have to follow. Um, it does make those payout ratios a little bit bigger because they're required by law to give out more dividends than a typical stock like Coke or Pepsi or whatever. But a big reason why I really like them is the fact that Amazon is a tenant of theirs. I don't know if you've ever heard of Amazon. Maybe it's new to you. Maybe you've been living under a rock, but it's pretty much how everyone operates their life at this point. I don't think that's deniable. I don't think you can try to talk yourself into anything other than agreeing that Amazon is an absolute force. And the fact that Amazon, 
uses warehouses and industrials and is a tenant to Stag makes me feel extremely comfortable. And the keyword there is industrial spaces, warehouses. I'm a firm, firm believer in real estate, okay? But only residential and industrial. I don't like office buildings. I think it's a dying breed. I like industrials because more people now are running their own businesses, doing e-commerce, needing places to store these items, store the inventory and ship them out. Stag's got you covered there. I'm just super bullish on Stag. I think I just, I don't know. Stag, you already know O Realty is one of them, but Stag, I think for me is a higher priority than O Realty at this point. But let's get into the third stock, okay? The third stock. And if you've been a member of the crew and you've been here a while, you know I've talked about most of these, if not, I believe all of these before. It might be a little redundant, but this really truly is like what I feel like even I personally will be focusing heavy on in 2022 are these four plus the bonus at the end. So don't come at me with the repetitive stuff, okay? I always find y'all some good gems, okay? You know I do and you know I will, but this one is serious because I'm really, really freaking bullish on these ones. Next era energy is going to come in third, you guys. NEE. -E. They have a 1.8% dividend, which is not the highest of the dividends, but I'll explain why I still love it in, in a minute here. They have increased the dividend for the last 26 years. The three-year growth of the dividend is an average of about 43%. And it is one, if not the biggest industry leader in this new renewable energy, clean energy type deal that everyone's all up in their panties with. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a little bit too much at this point for me, but I do, I do see this being a very safe, secure thing for 20, 30, 50 years down the line. Now, do I think natural gas is a dying breed? We're not going to use oil. We're not going to have, you know, chevrons. We're not going to have gas cars. We're not. No, there's no way in any time within the next 10, 15 years that we're going to be hundred percent clean energy. There's absolutely not happening. We got planes. We got trains. Isn't there a song? We got planes, trains, made. Oh no, that was the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Thanksgiving, like, you guys remember the Thanksgiving, like, TikTok or something? This lady's at the church. She's like, oh, we got, we got greens, beans, tomatoes, potatoes, or whatever. I don't know. That just made me, okay, sorry. We got too many things that use gas, okay? So I don't think this is like, you know, we're gonna see the end of gas, at least in my lifetime, but I do believe there are a lot of people that have clean energy and that as a top priority on their list. And to be honest with you, I'm not, like, against it or whatever. I think it's a good idea, but I, I just don't think that gas is going away. But I do appreciate it. I do like like the concept and I do know that there's a lot of attention on something like this especially right now with what we have who we have in office what's going on I do think this will still be a good investment in 2022 and beyond quite frankly for a very long time now this next one is an absolute I always say absolute favorite of my girl get a new line now this fourth one is my baby no I shouldn't say that because that ain't real either I mean it is it's just too expensive for me you guys and that's gonna be Lowe's I'm absolutely obsessed with Lowe's I think it is one of the safest investments and we'll talk about it that you could possibly make but it's expensive. We need a stock split or something like that, okay? But anyway, they will pay you a 1.15% dividend. They are a dividend king. They have been paying a dividend since 1961. And quite frankly, that's a pretty long time. <laughs> I'm sure by 2061, they will still be paying a dividend. Don't quote me on that and don't sue me if I'm wrong, but that's my opinion. They have increased the dividend the last 46 years. The three-year growth rate is at 48%. And you guys, this one right here, this is the real kicker. The the payout ratio is absolutely insane at 27%. Do you understand what that means? That means they have so much cash available to pay a dividend that it really does not phase them, which means they continue to grow the dividend is definitely something that will be happening for them. And we don't have to really worry about it getting cut because they have plenty of cash on the table to pay us. So, I mean, it's just... It's stunning. And I have talked a ton about what I feel about Lowe's and real estate and the industry and how every single person, no matter what, is going to need somewhere to lay their head at night. You cannot replace real estate. We're trying to replace the dollar. We're trying to replace the office space. We're trying to make a metaverse where we're just like some anime characters dressed up as however we want, doing whatever we want in augmented reality. But you will never, ever replace a home. That's not something that is gonna change. And speaking of that, since I am a realtor, and you guys already know if you need some assistance with that the email's in the description box if you need some help but cycle wise in the real estate industry millennials my age god i'm kind of embarrassed to say that i'm a millennial although most of us are okay it's the gen z's y'all i don't know who raised them i don't know but they've got some work to do but my age group is now the highest age of first time home buyers and the average home is about 37 years old right now meaning the millennials the diy culture we're coming together and we got to fix up these 37 year old average 
average homes on the market, okay? They've seen Chip and Joanna, okay? So where are they gonna go? They're gonna go to Lowe's. They're not gonna go to Home Depot. Home Depot is for like, you know, contractors and business people who like, that's just like businessy. Lowe's is for you and me, okay? It's for the homeowner. Plus now we all work at home pretty much. So people want to invest in their space. They're putting more money into their home because they're spending a lot more time in there. So in 2022, I do not see that changing. And I am a fan of Lowe's always and forever, quite frankly, past 2022. Now the bonus I promised y'all, which really might be a letdown for the real OGs who have probably stayed this far, but you guys, that's going to be Apple. Now, obviously Apple is not like known for their dividend, okay? They pay you one, but it's not anything special. They're known for their growth, but I am just so obsessed with Apple, you guys, like truly nothing, no one, no other company compares to Apple in my personal opinion. I think they have dominated literally, it's like Amazon, like they have dominated the way that we live our lives. Like we, I, I, who doesn't have one of these? Who doesn't have one? I mean, I know there's some like Samsung people, some Android people, but y'all, not a lot of y'all. <laughs> I mean, I'm just looking at my workflow and I couldn't survive without Apple products. The iPad, the MacBook, the phone, the watch, the whole shebang. Okay? And I mean, I've already talked about this in, in length about how, you know, commercials and other companies have to use iPhones and the commercials to make it relevant. If you're at that point, like you've made it. Plus Apple has so much money, billions, probably trillions of dollars. They are like probably the safest investment. They have one of the best financial sheets that you can find in the markets. Apple is one of the safest investments you could possibly make with an insane amount of room of growth. And I still think there is room to grow because I do believe they can tap into a lot of like AR situations. They can tap into the electric car situation. So I do think, I don't know if that's priced in right now, but I do think there's still room to go here. And the dividend doesn't hurt and they could raise it because they have so much money. Like why not raise it? You know what I'm saying? I'm obsessed. You guys, you've probably heard those ones before, but do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I'm truly passionate about these ones for the next year. Okay. Like these are on my list. I'm going to be adding this every single month. One of these, at least every single month. I'll be for sure. Stop sleeping on that one. Let me know down below what your top few stocks are for your watch list in 2022. And if you could smash a thumbs up, okay? I don't know what's going on with the algorithm, but she doesn't like me right now, okay? She really doesn't like me. And I'm just out here trying to trying to make it. If you are not yet a member of the crew and you like to make money and have a good ass time, you should consider subscribing by hitting the ME in the bottom corner or that red subscribe button down underneath the video. If you guys are interested in what I think you should do to build a successful dividend portfolio, go ahead and watch this video right here. You guys already know if you made it this far. I love you. And I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye guys.